Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Demon Souls. The vote from last time was not particularly close, so today is one of my favorite parts of the entire game. The final level of the Valley of Defilement. The Rotting Haven, or starting from the Rotting Haven. Beyond the swamp, filled with poisonous jellyfish and giant slugs, is a cavern that absorbs all that is unclean, and a shrine of rotten trees erected in honor of a demon. Visitors offer souls to be freed from their notions of suffering. This level will consist singularly of a boss fight. And it's a bit of a gimmick fight. Less of a fight than the conclusion to the narrative that's been unfolding over the course of the Valley of Defilement. And all of the final levels for each world will consist of that. A singular boss fight. Uh, with the exception of Boletaria. Go forth, Galvin. May you be unharmed. Leave us, Slayer of Demons. This is a sanctuary for the lost and wretched. There is nothing here for you to pillage or plunder. Please, leave quietly. We have heard a lot about Maiden Astraea, the sixth saint, and Garl Vinland, who journeyed into the Valley of Defilement at her side. Shall let no harm come to dearest Astraea. May you rot in the deepest depths of the swamp. Garl Vinland is not an aggressor here. He takes up a defensive position between you and Astraea and just plants himself, only attacking you if you come close. What is this theme? I hear I hear the motif in there. But it hmm. Oh no, you know what? It came on a little strong, but I think I dig this. I think it's a little bit big feeling. Uh, also notice how none of her worshippers are hostile to us at all until we attack them. So, some think that she's comforting the afflicted, some think that she's exploiting them. Some think that she embraced the demons for power, and others say that that is simply blasphemy. Well now, here she is. Archdemon, final boss of the Valley of Defilement, and she wants nothing more than for us to leave her be. So, before I say more, there are multiple ways to complete this fight. Uh, the direct way is through Garl Vinland. But there's a... Oh wait, we're gonna hear this dialogue later. Uh, she's too far away to hear it properly, so... Let me keep going. Uh, the direct route is fighting Garl Vinland to the death, but there is a trophy for killing her without hurting Garl Vinland. Uh, so that is what this sniping spot is for, and the many, many, many arrows I have brought. 
Uh, while I do this... Yeah, that's an interesting piece of dialogue, though. She feels abandoned by God. I'm gonna... I, I would normally just cut through this, but I have so many thoughts on this area in this fight that I think I'm just gonna go stream of consciousness on this. The bottom of the valley that we saw briefly in the cutscene and that we will see again soon is a quagmire of plague-infected blood uh, that is populated only by these painfully deformed babies. We'll get a better look at them soon. Remember, anything Boletarian society deems to be trash or refuse goes here, into the valley. And that boundary does not stop at people, grown or otherwise. And her demeanor, now that we finally met her, doesn't really suggest that she's as evil as everyone suspects she might be for having embraced demonic power. She seems to believe that we are here only to bring ruin, uh, to pillage, which suggests that in our quest for powerful demons' souls, we ourselves may be becoming corrupt. Which is certainly something that Miyazaki has played with before. Uh, but I'm gonna do a little bit of cutting while I reset so we can see the fight the other way. All right, so this time around, instead of sniping her and ignoring Garl Vinland, we're going to go through Garl Vinland and his enormous hammer that we'll be getting momentarily rammed. I must rest and insist on a dream upon our haven. You abandoned this long ago. What right do you have? We live humble lives. Leave us be. The best way to deal with him is to simply parry him. So I'm going to get in some parries, hit him while he's getting up, and then reset. And while we do that, um, we have heard so much about Astraea, and there's such a discrepancy between what we've heard and the first impression she makes. But then again, maybe there's merit to some of the rumors. Maybe Astraea was arrogant to think that she could master a power that has claimed and made monsters out of everyone else. Maybe she thought she could help um, using the demon souls to mitigate the harm done by demons. That she could fight them from within, and maybe she was wrong. There are so many interesting angles that you can look at her story from, and I think that's why she endures as such a fondly remembered character because there is quite a bit of ambiguity uh, in this twist that she's down here at the, at, at the bottom of the Valley of Defilement. Yes, an arch demon, but seemingly compassionate enough. It's such an interesting little wrinkle. Maybe she is a wolf in sheep's clothing or maybe she is horribly, horribly misjudged. I just remember, um, the first time that I finished this, uh, this fight, and going back to the Nexus and setting my controller down, I just... sat there and thought about it for a good while. And it was one of my earliest moments of like, oh, this isn't just a really cool game with a lot of interesting designs and novel ideas. This is actually something special. Uh, Dark Silver Shield passed down through generations of the Vinland family. One of the oldest known metals, Dark Silver is said to ward off malice. It protects the user from all magic. And anything different on the gloves? No, their weight slows stamina regeneration. That's about it. Sure enough, all these years later, this still gets me. And we're not done. The bog. If we wander in there, we will get plagued, and even worse, we'll get surrounded and attacked by an infinite quantity of these. There are some pure upgrade stones that you can get around here, but nothing that I'm super interested in. 
So here she is. This is all there is to this fight. She doesn't put a real fight up. She has one attack that she does occasionally. We have done no harm to you. There it is. Is not your abandonment punishment enough? How long must we weather this cruel fate? What more? Possibly take from us. Sure. You are too cruel. You have abandoned us. Now, to Astraea's credit, who created the valley? The demons didn't create this pipeline of, of festering rot. They didn't create the poison swamp or this bog filled with plague. You obtain the soul of an archdemon. The thick, colorless fog shall oppress you no longer. We'll get back to that. Um, the Valley of Defilement was created long before the fog and the demons. I read that archstone description real quick. For the Sanctuary of the Lost, Astraea was once the sixth saint, but now she lives beside those awaiting death in the Valley of Defilement. To ease the pain of the Valley's dwellers, Astraea chose surrender to a demon soul over the cruel god she worshipped. And regardless of her innocence or defilement or corruption, this is not the fault of the demons. Uh, one of the few remaining true relics of God, discovered by Astraea the Sixth Saint at a tender young age. I think this is the ring that, uh, when Astraea found this, it marked her for sainthood. But the point that I was getting at was that the Valley of Defilement was created long before the fog. Um, the counter-argument would be that the filthy woman uh, was saying that things were better before Astraea came, but even if that is true... Better than that can mean a lot of things, ranging from uh, perfect, 10 out of 10 on Yelp, loved the complimentary continental breakfast, to we still extremely bad. Um, consider for a second the way we deal with trash in the real world. For an idea of what I'm talking about, just uh, an, an, an existentially terrifying time, just Google the, these four words. Great Pacific Garbage Patch. All right, so the hero's remains were cleansed with bright water and offered to the Storm King, a beacon for countless storm beasts whose broad wings blacken the sky. Uh, anyway, consider landfills, garbage dumps, uh, chemical spills, toxic waste dumps, all that shit. My thought is that that was the Valley of Defilement pre-Old One at best. They nailed this! Oh, I was so looking forward to this and they nailed it! This needed the really intense weather effects. Oh, the drama of it is so good! This is really cool. Like, I don't connect with World 4. Um, and, and the whole overarching lore of it and the overarching narrative of this place. I don't emotionally connect with it in that same way that I do with the Valley of Defilement, where I just, I, I love thinking about all of the different angles um, that you can look at it from thematically. This is just raw cool. So we have two problems. The Storm Beasts and the Storm King. 
neither of which we can touch. The Storm King is um, being an aircraft carrier high above, blotting out what little light is diffusing through the clouds. And so, once we cut enough Storm Beasts down with this weapon that we have pulled from the ground, the Storm Ruler. Oh, that's cool. God, I will never get tired of this gimmick. It's a really good gimmick. We can now start thinning out the Storm Beasts. And once we get through enough of them, I mean, there's still a little bit of danger of getting skewered by enough of them in a row, but I think we're starting to be good. We're gonna put some distance between them and me, and then reset. And the Storm King should be coming down pretty soon. And then once he is down, it's kind of the same idea, except he has a lot more projectiles. But there's a pretty simple way. Oh, wow. That hurt way more than I was hoping. That's a little bad. Uh, yeah, I need to do this immediately. Order of the Pantsless Knights has returned. I was doing the heavy roll. I do not want to do that here. There's four or five volleys. Nope, nope. Didn't roll in time. But you stay put on the ground for so long that you uh, are actually usually going to be fine from the follow-ups. And I want to get my damage in with my pretty dope sword. Like I said, it lacks in the, in the narrative punch, but it's just cool. It's just cool and dramatic, and it's a great power fantasy uh, moment. And this is the easy way to deal with the barrage. You just take shelter uh, until he's done bombarding you. You can just pop out and get usually at least three shots in. Ooh, no, 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 no. I shouldn't, I should not have locked on. <laughs> I would have gotten a third hit if I hadn't locked on. Yeah, this is really cementing it for me. Like, this feels very validating for what I've been saying for a while now, which is that uh, the Shrine of Storms has, has benefited more than any other world from this remake, from being remade. Like, I think a lot of people are going to argue about which was better, the original or the remake. Like, it, Demon Souls is a beloved game with a pretty entrenched fan base, uh, so that, uh, that debate was going to happen no matter what but I feel like it's really, really hard to argue with at least certain levels or certain things. Uh, and the Shrine of Storms is just, mm, it's been, it's been a pleasure. One more. I love that this is memorable for a completely different reason than Astraea, and it's just sheer coolness. <laughs> and we get a pure Cloudstone and another Archdemon down. The Monolith Forest! Perhaps the demon, a flying beast resembling a gigantic stingray, is a manifestation of the thoughts and feelings of the Shadow Men who worshipped it centuries ago. The Shrine of Storms has been like a nightmare fairy tale. It's all of the cultural beliefs and traditions of the Shadow Men made manifest and made manifest in tremendous evil. 
But now... I haven't really pointed out the music here, but just take a listen. Thou seekest the then touch the deep. I keep the candles lit. I shall await thy return. We're gonna check in with <laughs> Urbane and Frake before oh, we go. Whoops, wrong menu. Since we just beat two archdemons, we have some particularly powerful spells and miracles available to us with some interesting lore. A miracle derived from the soul of Maiden Astraea become demon, returns nearby phantoms to their respective worlds. Uh, this miracle symbolizes the denunciation of Maiden Astraea, former sixth, former sixth saint, after her corruption. This miracle is a symbolic denunciation of the heretical tradition that worships death and the dead. This is from the old hero's soul. This is the church in the game uh, explicitly denouncing the Shadow Men's religion. And from the Storm King, Anti-Magic Field, one of the greatest of all miracles. It symbolizes the power of God in the opposition to the forces of evil. Yes. That we get from a demon's soul. God works in mysterious ways, apparently. Then the archdemon souls don't have anything on them either, do they? No. You have your wit. Pure blood. There we go. Astraea, who willingly accepted the corruption, the corrupted and corroded, naturally became the most corrupted of them all. This is for Death Cloud. I am fully prepared. And that is going to do it for now. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.